Let me read you this comment, okay? Let me read you this. The comment doesn't exist. I think uh, YouTube deleted it because he had a potty mouth. But but if you know it's the viewer knows it's clickbait, and the clickbaiter ass acts like the viewer doesn't know it's clickbait, doesn't that make the clickbaiter stupid? In this case. Okay. So what I'm gathering from this is we still got the click. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Tiny Geek Bills! This week we are showing you how to use the Raspberry Pi as a wireless access point to expand the coverage around the house. A little extra Wi-Fi. Bills. Bills! Starting off the weekend right, a solid Raspberry Pi project coming your way. That's how we do it. I mean, it, come on guys. So we have this issue in the back room here where our Wi-Fi is crap, we're pretty far from the actual router, and also to the left of me is the outside, and that is also very far from the router, and the internet connection is crap out there. So whenever we take our laptops, our devices, all, all those things, uh, we really can't use them unless we have a phone we're using LTE. So we started looking into Wi-Fi access points to increase the signal out there and here, uh, so we can start working out here when we're doing like the soldering and stuff, and then outside when we're hanging out. And then I was like, you know what? We could buy one and probably it would do really well or we could just use the Raspberry Pi. So we decided, hey, let's try the Raspberry Pi on for size. And so that's where we are. So the first thing we figured out are these access points require ethernet. Um, and so that was kind of a problem here at least because we don't have ethernet ports on the walls. And the idea at least is that we're gonna have these ethernet uh, cables connect to the, the wireless access points and then those would just spread the wireless signal in that area. Ideally that's kind of what we were going for, um, but there wasn't any ethernets in here for the Raspberry Pi so we kind of looked up some other things. And that's when I kind of stumbled on these repeaters which is basically uh, something that has a wireless signal that it takes in and then it uh, spreads it out wirelessly so it doesn't need ethernet. Uh, but there's a little bit of drawback there because there's a little bit of latency between the wireless repeater and the wireless router since it hops. And the, the, so the download speed supposedly is, is a little bit worse um, than the actual just taking it straight from the router. That and you need two kind of wireless uh, network interfaces, which for the Pi you're only given one. So that was going to be a problem. I'd either have to you know, use a different act method or have to buy a wireless USB dongle or something like that so that we had two network interfaces that were wireless. One to actually take the signal from the router and then one to kind of spread it out in this area. The other thing is it's not um, connected to the network. So if I had, you know, another device connected to my Pi that was acting as a repeater, that device would not be accessible from a device that is connected to the router itself. Which is not the, you know, the biggest deal, but uh, we do like to SSH into a lot of things in the network, so it would be, be nice if it was the same exact network. So what we ended up going with is the wireless access point that requires Ethernet. And the way we got the Ethernet connection all the way from the router in that room into here is we use these things called uh, Ethernet power line adapters. I've never heard of this before, but uh, until researching it, but you basically plug the into the wall, it's directly connected to the router, um, and then it sends a signal through the wall. If you have an outlet in another room, you can connect another adapter to that outlet, and that adapter can convert the signal from the router that's going into the power line of the house into actual uh, ethernet internet. And so we didn't actually need to drag and create lines of ethernet through the attic or the walls or anything like that from the router to this room. So we use that and we're gonna connect it to the Raspberry Pi. The Pi is then gonna take that ethernet signal and it's gonna wirelessly transmit it around it using its network interface, its wireless network interface. Now it's not gonna be a mesh network per se where you're seamlessly switching access point to access point on the same network. Uh, this Raspberry Pi will have its own SSID and password, but once you're connected to it, you'll be on the same exact network. You'll be assigned an IP that you can then reach from another device in the you know, that's connected to the router itself. The Raspberry Pi has fairly good documentation on setting up the wireless access point, which I'll be following. You can see you just need the Raspberry Pi connected to Ethernet, and it outputs to WLAN, and the client is in the same network. The first step is to install Host APD. This is just uh, software that's going to allow us to output Wi-Fi via the uh, network card. And so we'll configure that later, but sudo apt install host apd will do the trick. 
The next two commands we're going to run are to unmask it and then to enable it. And basically that just means that we're going to enable the service and allow the system uh, daemon to start on boot. These commands are simply sudo systemctl unmask host apd and sudo systemctl enable host apd. The next thing we're going to need to do is create a file in the etsy systemd network directory which is basically defining a bridge and so we're going to use the br the bridge dash br zero dot net dev file and here we're just defining the name of the network device and the type which is bridge after this we're going to now define a network file in the same directory this is just a configuration to tell the network daemon basically we want to hook up this bridge between the ethernet network interface and the wireless lan network interface Ultimately, this will tell the network daemon to connect the ethernet interface with the wireless LAN interface in the same network. And now we just need to enable the network daemon to pick up this configuration on boot. This is just a simple command sudo systemctl enable systemd-networkd to make sure that every time the Pi boots up, we're going to pick up this configuration and create the new bridge interface. Almost done, we're just going to configure the DHCP uh, server configuration. This basically is going to tell uh, the Raspberry Pi what IP address to get from the router and also it's going to tell which interfaces to deny and also interfaces to define. So in this case, we're going to deny the WLAN and ETH because we don't want those doing anything crazy since we already defined those in the network configuration. And then here we're going to define the bridge interface along with the static IP just so that we can connect to this every single time at 10.0.0.120. I also define some other variables like the router IP and the DNS server IPs. Uh, these are just necessary in order to, to configure the interface properly, but basically we wanted a static IP. At this point, we just need to kill off any command that's potentially using the WLAN. And we run this RF kill unblock WLAN. Then we take a look at the hostapd.conf file. Now this file is just a bunch of configuration for the actual Wi-Fi that's going to be emitted from the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to change things as you please. So for example, we want the SSID to be Greg's Magic Outside Land and the passphrase is going to be Magical Greg. There's some other configs you can play with. Um, I'll leave a link to how you can configure it in the with a wiki in the description. But basically, you can choose the channel, what type of uh, frequency you want, 2.4 or 5, and some other parameters here. The last thing to do is just reboot this system and everything should be up and running and connect to Wi-Fi. And after setting all that stuff up, we were able to actually access that Raspberry Pi from the outside and in this room. Um, and now we're going to go over kind of uh, whether or not it makes sense to purchase uh, an actual dedicated uh, wireless access point instead of just converting to Raspberry Pi. So we noticed the Wi-Fi works pretty well in this room, definitely a lot better than the, the other room with the router, but we did notice that outside uh, the signal was kind of weak. Uh, we removed the metal screen from the window to try to get a better distribution of the wireless signal so there's no interference with the metal screen and it still didn't really do that well. It's certainly better than just the router connecting to it. When we connect to this SSID, it's a little bit better, but it's not the best. Honestly, this'll do, but you know, when we move, which we plan on moving, if this were the case, if this was a permanent residence, then we would definitely take, actually just purchase a wireless access point that's built for this. Guys, not too tough of a build. If you wanna practice with your Raspberry Pi a little bit, Expand the Wi-Fi. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Ty and Gig, and also LEDs. LEDs are coming up. So if you like that, don't forget to subscribe. We've got LEDs coming for we you. We have more LEDs. Yeah. Builds.